Hi, my name is Anthony Dessa. Today we are going to see how we can use Unity to address cross-cutting concerns like cache. In our first example, we are going to implement caching without Unity. The purpose of this example is to demonstrate the amount of effort that is required to implement caching. Let's suppose you have a method called add. In this method, we are going to implement caching manually. The first thing that I did was I created a cache object. I created a cache key by concatenating the name of the class, method, and the parameter that are passed in. I'd first try to retrieve the object from the cache. If I find the object in the cache, I will just cast the object to the return type and return the results. If I don't find the object in the cache, then I will perform the calculations. I have deliberately put a sleep of one second. Next, I have add the result into the cache so that it is available for retrieval next time. The cache will expire after two seconds. I have created an instance of a class called caching without unity. I'm using a stopwatch to keep track of the time that has been elapsed. In my first call to the method add, I'm expecting a delay of one second. Next time when I call the same method with exactly the same parameter, the value will be retrieved from the cache, so there won't be any delay. The third time when I call the same method, it will still be retrieved from the cache. Then I'm waiting for two seconds. If you recall, the cache has been defined for two seconds. After two seconds, the cache will expire. The last time when I called the method add, the cache has already expired. So I'm expecting a delay of one second once again. This example demonstrates the use of cache in an application. Following are the issues associated with this approach. It violates dry principle, that is, don't repeat yourself. If suppose you have four methods, add, subtract, divide, and multiply, you will have to implement caching in all four methods. It's very time consuming, it's inconsistent, and it's very difficult to enforce. In our next example, we are going to use Unity to implement caching. Object interception in Unity. The interception subsystem is made up of three key elements the interceptor or proxy, the behavior pipeline, and the behavior or aspect. At the two extreme end of the subsystem, you will find the client application and the target. Once the client application is configured to use interception API, any method invocation goes through a proxy object, the interceptor. The proxy object looks at the list of registered behavior and invokes them through the internal pipeline. Each configured behavior is given a chance to run before or after the regular invocation of the object method. What this means is that the client application, once it is registered, all the calls from the client application will be intercepted by the interceptor. The interceptor will then examine the interception pipeline and find out what are the behaviors that are registered. Then it will pass on the input parameters to the behavior and execute each behavior that is registered one by one. Then it will invoke the target object, passing in the parameters that were passed by the client. The target object will be executed and it will return. Once it is returned, then it will be returned to the behavior. The behavior will get a chance to execute once again and and finally, the interceptor will receive the call and return the value to the client application. There are four steps to implementing caching with Unity. Define an interface. In our case, we are going to define an interface called iCalculator. Define a concrete class that implements the interface iCalculator. We'll define a concrete class called Calculator. Define a class that implements caching behavior and then glue all above three steps using either configuration file or by using fluid syntax. We are going to use fluid syntax in this example. The first step to implement caching is to define an interface. In our case, we are going to define an interface called iCalculator. There are only two methods in this interface, add, subtract. We are going to implement caching just for one method that is add. To implement caching, we have to annotate the method. We will annotate the add method with the word cache. Cache takes in three parameters. The first parameters is the duration. 
The duration can be defined in seconds, minutes, hours, or days. The next parameter is the cache type. Cache type in our case is the in-memory cache. And the third parameter is the type of serialization. In our case, we are going to use the XML serialization. The return type is serialized based on the type of serialization that we have defined over here. Step two is to define a concrete class that implements the interface I calculator. There were only two methods in the interface, which is add and subtract, and we are implementing both of them over here. As you can see in the concrete class, there is no reference to caching, and it is very clean and easy to understand. I've deliberately defined a delay of one second. For caching behavior, we have defined two different enum types. One is called cache type. You can cache your object either in process memory or out of process memory. These are different options that you have available to you. When you want to save your object in the cache, you have to decide what type of serialization you would like to use. Different options are JSON and XML. The default option is null. I have a class called XML Serializer. The job of the XML Serializer is to serialize the object and deserialize the object. Before the object is saved in the cache, it is serialized. And after the object is retrieved from the cache, it is deserialized. The cache attribute class, you first have to decide on the name of the class that you're going to use for your attribute. You can, in my case, I have called it cache. So I have to use the same name when I'm decorating a method. If I decide to change the name of the attribute, Let's say I put the word Y in it, then I have to match this name over here as well. Once you have decided on the name, then you just have to concatenate the word attribute along with it. There are different properties that you have defined in this class, which becomes available to you when you are decorating a method. You can define the duration for which the cache will be valid in days, hours, minutes, and seconds. You can define what type of cache you want to use. Either it's in-process cache, out-of-process cache. You can define the type of serialization that you want to use, JSON serialization or XML serialization. As you could now see that our methods is now linked with the attributes. Now we have to link the attribute with the behavior class who is going to re respond to this attribute. In create handler, you associate the attribute with the behavior class which is going to respond to this attribute and in our case our behavior class is caching behavior. Caching behavior class will respond to all the methods which are decorated with the word cache because of the association made between the cache attribute class. Caching behavior class implements the interface called I call handler. I call a handler have one property called order order in which the handler will be executed. If you have multiple handlers, then you can control their execution sequence by using this property. And the other method that this interface has is called invoke. Caching behavior. There are three private methods that I have defined in this class. The input parameter of get input parameter info is the same that was passed to the invoke method. Get input parameter info class loops through all the parameters that were passed by the client to this behavior and it, concat it creates a concatenated string. The output from get input parameter info is used in a method called hash cache. The hash cache key then converts the input into a hash key. The cache attribute method uses the input and translates all the name value pair that were supplied as a part of the decoration and returns a class of type cache attribute. If there are certain parameters which are not defined by the, by the method, then it can use the configuration file to override those properties. Invoke method takes two parameters of type i method invocation and get next handler delegate and it returns a parameter of type i method return. I pass the input to get input parameter info to get a string representation of the input parameter. I'm using reflection to get the name of the interface and the name of the method that was called by the client. I'm using the parameter info and the name of the class method pair as an input to hash cache key method. The hash cache key method returns a hash cache key. I'm using the hash cache key as a key to my cache. I call a method called get on the cache objects by using the key. If the object is available in the cache, then I deserialize the object and return it. If the object is not available in the cache, then I call a private method called 
cat cache settings cat cache settings returns all the parameters that were set by the method as a part of the decoration then i pass control to the next behavior or the target object when the target object gets executed it returns the result in our case it will be the addition of two numbers i take the result and serialize it i use the return value from the target object and cache it by using a set method on the cache object i use the hash cache key that was generated above and i use the expiry date as defined as a part of the decoration then and then i return the result back to the client. Let's recap of what we have done so far. The first step that we did was to define an interface called iCalculator and then we define an annotation on the method on which we wanted to implement caching. In our case we have just defined annotation for add. Caching will only be applicable for add method. The second step is to create a concrete class that implements this interface. In our case we have created a calculator concrete class that implements the iCalculator interface. The third step is to define the behavior. We have defined a caching behavior. The third step is to glue the first three steps by either using a configuration file or fluid syntax. In this example, we are going to use fluid syntax to register the behavior. First, we will create an instance of a class Unity Container. We'll use the instance of a class to add a new extension. Since we will be intercepting the call made by the client to the target object, so the new extension that we are going to add will be of type interception. While registering the type, we will map the concrete class calculator to its interface iCalculator. We will ask Unity to intercept all the calls that are made on the interface iCalculator. In a last step, we will ask Unity to resolve the interface iCalculator to its concrete class. In our case, it will be resolved to a concrete class calculator. Let's run this application and see everything in action. Let's analyze the result of our execution. The first time when we will call the method add, I'm expecting a delay of one second. Since the value was not stored in the cache, so it will be delayed by one second. Second time when we will call the method add with exactly the same parameter, this time the value will be retrieved from the cache and hence we don't have to wait for one second. We'll wait for two seconds. That time will be enough for the cache to expire. Now if we will call the add method with exactly the same parameter, that is five and three, instead of retrieving the value from the cache it will regenerate the result since we are using the parameter to generate the cache key so executing the method add with different parameter that is 5 and 7 will not result in retrieval of the value from the cache since we did not annotate the subtract method with the word cache so the behavior will ignore a call made to a subtract method on the interface i calculator summary it is recommended to use unity to address cross-cutting concerns like logging caching and security once client application has been configured for interception then all the calls on the interface will be intercepted by the interceptor interceptor will call all registered behavior that is caching in our case. Annotation can be used on method to pass additional parameter to the behavior. Annotation has not been defined on a method then behavior will ignore the method. To implement caching you will have to do following. Create an interface. Create a concrete class that implements the interface. Create a caching behavior class. Configure the client either by using fluid syntax or by configuration file. Thank you so much for attending the course.